The year is 356 BC. In the rugged land of Macedon, a prince is born. His name, Alexander, his father, King Philip II, a ruler of ambition and might. From a young age, Alexander is different. He is strong and athletic, excelling in horsemanship and combat. But it is his mind that truly sets him apart. He devours the works of Homer, dreaming of heroes and glory. He learns strategy and philosophy from Aristotle himself. This is no ordinary prince. This is Alexander, and destiny awaits. Macedon is a kingdom on the rise, a force to be reckoned with. King Philip dreams of conquering Persia, the old enemy, the great empire to the east. He builds a powerful army, trained in new tactics, equipped with the latest weapons. This is the world Alexander grows up in, a world of ambition, war, and the promise of greatness. He is destined to inherit his father's kingdom, his army, and his dreams. But Alexander has his own vision, a vision that will take him beyond anything Philip could have imagined. At the age of 20, Alexander's life takes a dramatic turn. King Philip is assassinated. The throne passes to Alexander. He is young, but he is ready. He quickly consolidates his power, crushing rebellions with ruthless efficiency. He rallies his father's army, his voice booming with confidence and charisma. He announces his own ambition to conquer the Persian Empire, to avenge past grievances, to claim glory for himself and for Macedon. The Persian Empire is vast, wealthy, and powerful. It is ruled by Darius III, a king who commands respect and fear. Many doubt Alexander's chances. They see a young, untested king leading a relatively small army against a colossal empire. But Alexander is undeterred. He has confidence in himself, in his men, and in his destiny. He leads his army east, crossing the Hellespont into Asia Minor, the first step on a journey that will change the world. Alexander's campaign begins with a series of swift victories. City after city falls to his army. The Persian satraps, caught off guard by Alexander's speed and aggression, are unable to mount a coordinated defense. At the Granicus River, Alexander faces his first major test. The Persian army, commanded by the experienced general Memnon of Rhodes, is a formidable force. They are deployed along the steep banks of the river, their cavalry poised to charge. Many of Alexander's advisors urge caution, suggesting a flanking maneuver or a night attack. But Alexander, ever bold, decides on a direct assault. He leads his companion cavalry, the elite of his army, in a daring charge across the river, straight into the heart of the Persian lines. The Battle of the Granicus River is a chaotic melee. Persian cavalry crashes against Macedonian infantry. Arrows darken the sky. Alexander in the thick of the fighting distinguishes himself with his bravery and skill. He fights like a man possessed, his voice roaring above the din of battle. The Macedonian army inspired by their king's courage, fights with ferocity and discipline. They slowly push back the Persians, their sarissas, long pikes that are a hallmark of the Macedonian phalanx, proving deadly effective. The Persian cavalry, unable to break the Macedonian lines, begins to waver. Sensing victory, Alexander presses his attack. He leads a final, decisive charge that routs the remaining Persian forces. The Battle of the Granicus River is a resounding victory for Alexander. It announces his arrival on the world stage as a military commander of extraordinary talent and ambition. Section 5. The Gordian Knot, Untangling a Legacy. As Alexander's army marches deeper into Persia, his legend grows. Stories of his bravery, his strategic brilliance, and his unwavering determination spread like wildfire. In the ancient city of Gordium, Alexander encounters a challenge of a different kind, the Gordian Knot. The knot, tied to an ox cart, is said to be impossible to untie. Legend has it that whoever unties the knot will rule all of Asia. Alexander, never one to back down from a challenge, examines the knot carefully. He sees the intricate weave, the seemingly endless loops. Then, in a moment of inspiration, he draws his sword and slices through the knot with a single blow. The Gordian knot is untied. Alexander's solution, bold and unconventional, cements his reputation as a man who makes his own destiny. Section 6. The Battle of Issus, Outmaneuvering the Great King News of Alexander's victories reaches Darius III, the Persian king. Enraged by the audacity of this young upstart, Darius assembles a massive army, determined to crush Alexander and drive him back into the sea. The two armies meet at Issus, a narrow plain near the Mediterranean coast. The Persian army vastly outnumbers the Macedonians. Darius, confident in his numerical superiority, believes victory is assured. But Alexander, as always, 
as a plan. He deploys his army with his usual tactical brilliance, using the terrain to his advantage. He positions his elite companion cavalry on the right flank, ready to strike at the heart of the Persian army. The Battle of Issus is a clash of titans, a battle that will decide the fate of empires. Section 7. The Siege of Tyre, an Unstoppable Force After the victory at Issus, Alexander continues his relentless advance. City after city falls to his army. He reaches the island city of Tyre, a formidable fortress, renowned for its wealth and its powerful navy. The Tyrians, confident in their impregnable defenses, refuse to surrender. The Siege of Tyre is a test of Alexander's patience and his ingenuity. For months his army bombards the city walls with catapults and battering rams. They build a massive causeway connecting the island to the mainland, allowing them to bring their siege engines within range. The Tyrians resist fiercely using every weapon at their disposal to repel the Macedonian assault, but Alexander's determination is unyielding, he refuses to be denied. Finally, after a grueling seven-month siege, Tyre falls. The city is sacked, its citizens sold into slavery. The Siege of Tyre is a testament to Alexander's indomitable will and his mastery of siege warfare. Section 8. The Battle of Gaugamela, a legacy forged in fire. With Tyre subdued, Alexander sets his sights on the heart of the Persian Empire. He marches into Mesopotamia where Darius awaits with a massive army, determined to make a final stand. The two armies clash at Gaugamela, near the ruins of Nineveh. The Battle of Gaugamela is one of the most famous battles in history. It is a clash of civilizations, a battle that will decide the fate of the known world. Alexander, outnumbered but not outmatched, once again demonstrates his tactical genius. He maneuvers his army with precision, exploiting gaps in the Persian lines, using his companion cavalry to devastating effect. The battle rages for hours, a chaotic whirlwind of blood and steel, but in the end, Alexander's superior tactics and the fighting spirit of his troops prevail. The Persian army is routed, Darius fleeing for his life. The Battle of Gagamela marks the end of the Persian Empire and the beginning of Alexander's reign as the undisputed ruler of Asia. Section 9. The Reach of Power, From Egypt to India After Gagamela, Alexander's empire stretches from the Mediterranean Sea to the Indus River. He conquers Egypt, where he is crowned Pharaoh. He founds cities, including Alexandria in Egypt which will become a center of learning and culture for centuries to come. He pushes east into Central Asia, fighting fierce battles against Scythian horsemen and mountain tribes. He crosses the Hindu Kush, leading his army through treacherous mountain passes. He reaches the Indus River, where he fights a fierce battle against the Indian king, Porus. Alexander's ambition knows no bounds. He dreams of conquering India, of reaching the ends of the earth. But his army, exhausted from years of campaigning, is at the limit of its endurance. They plead with him to turn back. Reluctantly, Alexander agrees. Section 10. The Untimely End of a Legend In 323 BC at the age of 32, Alexander the Great dies in Babylon. The cause of his death remains a mystery, possibly malaria, typhoid fever, or poisoning. His empire, vast and sprawling, is divided among his generals, the Diadochi, who will spend the next several decades fighting amongst themselves for control. Alexander's death, so sudden, so unexpected, sends shockwaves through the ancient world. He is mourned by his soldiers who had followed him to the ends of the earth, and by the people he conquered who had come to respect, even admire, their conqueror. He leaves behind a legacy that will inspire awe and wonder for millennia to come. Section 11. Alexander's Enduring Legacy, A World Transformed Alexander the Great's legacy is multifaceted and enduring. He was a military genius, a visionary leader, and a cultural icon. His conquests spread Greek language, art, and philosophy throughout the ancient world, ushering in the Hellenistic Age, a period of cultural exchange and intellectual ferment that would have a profound impact on the development of Western civilization. He founded cities, built roads, and established trade routes, connecting East and West in unprecedented ways. He fostered a spirit of exploration and discovery, expanding the horizons of the known world. Alexander's life, though short, was a testament to the power of ambition, the allure of glory and the enduring impact of one man on the course of history. He remains even today a figure of fascination and debate, his name synonymous with conquest, leadership, and the boundless potential of human ambition.